Good bright and early morning, YouTube. Thanks for tuning back into the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So I was going back through some of my questions that I've had from quite a few different users, and one of them was, you know, what does it take to go into making your YouTube videos? How do you do it? So today we're gonna focus in on that, what I do to do YouTube videos, uh, when I do them, how I do them, some editing, a uh, little bit of tips and tricks here and there if you guys want to get started on your own YouTube channel. It may not be as flashy as you guys think, but this is how it works, guys. Stay tuned. So first thing I'd like to point out is, yes, even though I do work here at a dealership, it's not like I can do and make this content every single day. My channel's content kind of revolves around automotive, tools, trucks, lifted trucks, my Duramax, so I've got a whole different range of uh, different ideas that I can work myself through. But a lot of the stuff that you guys always say you wanna see is stuff that's here at the dealership. Now, like I said, I am the shop foreman here, but I don't like to really do videos very often here in the shop. Now there are some circumstances where my boss says, yes, yes, go ahead and do a video on that one. That would make some great content. And I will go ahead and do that. For instance, the Trackhawk videos. I was uh, given permission to do those from work, so I went ahead and kind of did them. Plus they were more along the lines of time-lapse videos. I didn't have to do a whole lot of hands-on camera work here and there while I was doing the video. Otherwise, I am stuck really doing my videos on the weekend. So we're in here on this Sunday doing a little bit of uh, content shooting. Me and Captain Ron, you'll be seeing that on his channel. So make sure you go and check out Mr. Captain Ron. We'll put a link to his channel down in the description below. Most of the time I'll come up with my content actually through working out the day, but I'll just usually get on my phone and I've got a list of probably 30 videos or so that I really need to get to or feel like I want to address and get to, but there's just not enough time in the week to get to doing these things. So if you guys do your own YouTube channel, know that splitting up your time is going to be something that's very important. If you have a family, you've got to split your time between that, work, your job, your other friends and everything. You're going to have to dole out some kind of a time and you're going to have to give evenly to each of those areas because you don't want to be lacking in one area you know your family your wife your girlfriend get pissed off something like that because you're doing all these YouTube videos and all this editing and everything else that goes along with it so make sure you dole your time out appropriately the next things you guys have to think about regarding your content is exactly what you're putting into your videos what you guys have made your channel out to be the kind of source content that you guys are really aiming and focusing at you guys don't really want to deviate away from that way too much you know on my channel i do like three different things but you don't see me doing you know reviews on you know whatever else it is like iphones or other things that i end up liking and using you know guys you, you tuned into this channel for the automotive things, the truck things, the tool stuff, the toolbox things. That's what you guys enjoy and you guys tune into throughout the week. So that's what I like to keep this channel content aimed at. If you guys want to make other content to go along with your channel, then just make another channel. You know, that's all there is to it. So stay focused on what you guys really intend to do with your YouTube channels. Then you also have to worry about what's going on around you. Like Captain Ron here. Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> You've always got to think about your surroundings and the other stuff that you guys are working with. Bubble wrap. Really? That, that's what we're working with today? Yep, that's what we're working with. Children. I swear, just children. So the next thing we're going to talk about is equipment. Now there's a lot of other YouTubers out there that say you don't need a fancy camera, you don't need nice mics, you don't need fancy editing software, you don't. That is purely up to you guys. You really do not need that. For instance, I personally know other YouTubers that they literally 
only take video on their smartphone and they do all of their editing on their phone and they can do a pretty decent job at that one. Now the uploading and everything like that is gonna take more time, but we'll get into that later here in the rest of the video. Me personally, I started out using a GoPro, I think it was a Series 2. Uh, one that I had picked up used and it was something that that's just kind of what I had but I also didn't expect to do as much as I'm doing right now so therefore you know like a third of the way into the videos that I've done so far I switched over to a newer camera and a newer setup so we're gonna look at it here in the mirror it's a little bit echoey in here but we'll see how this works uh, for my main camera this is my Panasonic Lumix G7 camera that I like to use for most of my videos. It is a uh, DSLR camera. Uh, I use a Rode microphone, as you guys can see here, with a little cattail on it because a lot of the things that I like to do are outside and it's a lot of other ambient temperature as well. Uh, the lenses on these things are crazy expensive, so having those is something I'd like to get another wider angle one, but those are, they cost more than the camera. So right now I've got this thing on, this big long uh, selfie stick that I've got to hold it out like three feet from me to be able to do anything. So we're working with that one for most of my everyday videos. And then in the rest of my arsenal, I usually just carry this bag around. We've got another couple of, a little tripod here. I've got my larger tripod that I have, actually it's currently at home. So we've got that and then the adapter to put my camera onto said tripod. Then we've got my drone. I haven't been able to get it out a lot recently because it's freaking cold and snowy and crappy outside and they don't like to work so well in the snow. Uh, extra uh, little set for the lens and cover and then my drone bit there, some extra batteries and some extra remotes and batteries for the cameras that I have. And then we've got one of these. And then for some of the other um, little projects that we go through and just to get some different angles, we've got our GoPro Hero. That one I actually won on another channel a couple of months ago. So that was kind of a nifty thing to have won. All the attachments, hand attachments and everything for that. So primarily that's what Captain Ron uses to do a lot of his videos. So he likes to use that one, which is pretty cool. It's nice and tight places, so we like to use that one as well. Now the middle part, which is the actual content portion of your video, is gonna be all on you. That's all about your style, how you like to talk, how you like to convey your message, where you like to hold your camera, the kind of angles, the kind of lighting you like to use. If you're doing it inside or outside, that's all up to you guys. And there are millions and millions of YouTube videos that you can see everybody's individual style that they like to use. So when you're working on these videos, you have to keep that in mind to where your attention span of your viewer is gonna be based on that. So keep it to the style of videos that you enjoy doing. Also, again, keep your content relevant to your channel as well. All right, so now that we're back at the house, Casa de Rust Belt here. Uh, this is where we're gonna be doing all of our editing and whatnot on the computers to try to get everything done uh, digitally for you guys to enjoy because these videos, they don't just automatically come out as uh, pristine pieces of work. No, we gotta put a little bit of effort into it, so let's go check out the station where I put all these together. Not as a video of uh, puppy dogs or anything, but everybody say hi to Max and Charlotte here, mascots of the channel. And then over here where we make our videos at. So for you guys who are interested, this desk from FlexiSpot is a pretty interesting desk. It's really easy to uh, kind of put together and install. It came in three boxes. The motors and the legs were all kind of in one unit, just had very few screws to put together into that one. The desktop came as a second box, and then all of these other accessories that come with that are separate as well. So I've got a couple of different hanging units off the bottom of it one for a tower there, and then I've got a second hanging unit for my power supply in the back, right back there. So really those are for CPUs, but they just hang there and they hold what we need to. The motorized unit, it's actually able to go quite high. It's gonna go up to almost four feet up in the air. So being able to get to a full standing position makes it really easy if I don't feel like sitting for a couple hours at a time. 
So when we're talking for me and Miss Rust Belt, she's a whole whopping five, four, and a fourth. Don't let her forget the fourth. And then there, there's uh, memory spots here for you as well. So we've got these into memory, so they're able to lower to an automatic placement to where you need the desk to actually be at for the correct person who's working with it that day. Then we need to give a shout out to Easy Accessory as well. They sent me this one. It's a nice little desk organizer to go along with it. Wireless QI charging on the phone and some extra organizational bits for the desk as well. Also big shout out to my friend Meteorite. She's got her own Twitch live stream channel where she does 8-bit pixel art of all different kinds. This is my favorite, one of the Star Fox images that we got from her is a super nice piece and uh, we're going to put the link to hers down in the description below as well. The chair as you saw in my Instagram post if you follow me over there is a super high quality piece of furniture. It comes from Cutting Edge Solutions. They do a certain line of furniture that is nice automotive race seat inspired. You got the nice leather race seat the tire tread in the arms here fully adjustable on those up and down the height is fully adjustable as well it sits almost at a bar stool level and then who's not to loving this uh this gear shift indicator here for the raising mechanism plus we have the nice coil spring looking to the bottom and the footstool looks like a nice 70s steering wheel also and all this thing is a really awesome piece of furniture. I would definitely recommend that one to anybody. Again, the link to that one to a Cutting Edge Automotive Solutions site is gonna be down in the description below. So here, look into what we're using on our computer. Have a seat in this nice comfy chair. And we've got our Premiere Pro app open, the program here on the computer. And it's always nice to have a look at Star Fox looking over you. But yeah. What's happening, YouTube? These things don't come together really quick, but it's not too bad when you've got a setup like this one. So when we're talking about doing a lot of this video editing, uh, you've got to put a bit of time into that as well. When you're doing a random, like, say, 15-minute video or so, you're going to have about 30 to 40 minutes into actual filming, depending on what kind of stuff that you guys have already ready, and depending on the, uh, the Captain Ron interruptions that you have halfway through it, or other interruptions from air compressors, or whatever it may be. So then you've got that much time in it, you've got to be able to put everything onto your computer, so you've got to have time to do that, time away from all the screaming kids and whatnot. Then when we're actually looking into editing, I usually spend right around an hour or so of time in each video to actually do the editing. When that comes into play, then you've got to have time for rendering, so depending on your PC, what you've got, that's going to take roughly another half hour to 40 minutes to render itself and then you have to take time to actually upload it to YouTube. Figuring out all your text, all your keywords, all of your uh, tags that you want to put into everything, spreading it across social media, that takes another hour of time. So for that 15 minute or so video you've got right around three to four hours of actual work to put into each and every video. So I hope you guys get a good understanding of what it actually takes to do these YouTube videos. I'm not discouraging you at all. In fact, I am actually going to say go ahead and do these YouTube videos because getting your views and your information out is what the platform's all about. Being able to show what you guys think in your respective fields, getting your ideas out there and getting different views from everybody else in the community as well. The tool and truck and lifted stuff can communities that we're a part of as part of these videos have been super amazing and being able to add to them has been probably the most rewarding part of doing all of these YouTube videos. Well guys, that's about all I've got for you today. If you like the content like this, make sure you get a thumbs up to it. Make sure you turn on that bell notification so you get notified of when I come out with cool and awesome new content like this one. As always guys, just remember, you stay awesome.